All right, we'll start with Sean Cunningham. Hey, what's up, Glenn? How you doing? Good, man. Good. Um, I was just wondering about the way the team, <clears throat> excuse me, has responded just in this kind of uh, wake of troubled games, kind of tough defense. Um, just how's the demeanor of the team as you guys try to look to bounce back? Yeah, I think um, the last two practices that we that we had, they were really good, really intense. Um, everybody brought it. Thought the energy was up, um, and we came with the with the focus, you know, knowing that we had to practice, knowing we had to get better at some things. Um, I like the intensity that we had. So um, it's a little different because we we hadn't had a lot of practice time. We were playing every other day um, to get two days off, uh, get some rest uh, yesterday, get a good practice in a day. I think it really helped. And um, watched a little bit of film and slowed things down and kind of, um, you know, just had to had to focus focus up on, on a couple of things. So it was good overall. Go Matt George. Hey, Glenn. Doug Christie pointed out on a, a couple broadcasts, even in the, the games where you've given up 130-plus points, that there would be strong defensive possessions that would still result in a made bucket by your opponents, even, even with a, a hand in their face, and how demoralizing that could be from a team when you feel like you did all the work, but the shot still went in. Can you give us a little insight on how you overcome that while you're on the floor? Yeah, I think um, it's the next play mentality. You know, uh, since I've been in the league, um, you know, it seems like every year um, offensively the game is advancing. So, um, you know, you kind of you kind of run back and get ready for offense or try to forget that possession. But I think, um, you know, the way that we uh, have been trying to work on things defensively, um, we kind of got to lock in a little bit more on that defensive end and, and kind of not let those possessions go and know uh, where our rotations need to come from, uh, how we messed up so that we don't keep making the same mistakes twice. Um, I think that that's our problem right now is um, we tend to make the same mistakes a couple times in a row uh, against good teams, against any team in this league. Really, um, that'll hurt you. So just trying to learn and not make the same mistakes twice. Marshall Harris. Hey, not sure if you if you heard yet that uh, Adam Silver uh, made a statement talking about the uh, vaccine today and says that he wants to uh, have players. Uh, there's been discussions, I should say, of players uh, receiving the COVID-19 vaccine so that they can influence the public regarding the safety and effectiveness, especially uh, in the African-American community. Um, what are your thoughts on just the vaccine? How, how have you and your teammates maybe discussed that? And um, do you see there being a real issue with you know, people being willing to take the vaccine, not just in general, but as NBA players. Yeah, um, you know, uh, I literally just walked out of practice and 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 seeing that, you know, um, I guess uh, that's that's something that Adam has said. And I mean, um, going back to the bubble, I think when when everything first happened and went down um, in the bubble, we kind of trusted the league to take the right precautions and right steps uh, to make sure that we were safe. Um, I think at the same time, the league did a good job of communicating with the MBPA to make sure that the players who did want to go to the bubble, uh, we were, we went and we were safe. Uh, players who didn't want to go, didn't go. So I think, um, you know, hopefully uh, we can come to some type of uh, resolution towards this. You know, I know everybody doesn't want to take it. I know some people do want to take it. Um, I know family members and, and some older people that are waiting at, waiting in line to get that list. Some nurses are still waiting in line to get on that list. So I know people got their, their, um, their reasons and things that they want to do. Um, you know, so I, I, I'm interested to, to kind of follow this just like y'all and see what happens out of it. But I think uh, we kind of got to, Trust um, the NBA, the NBA, and um, all their precautions to know that they're trying to keep us as safe as possible. And um, on the outside world, like I said, I know it's people that's been waiting to kind of get this um, get this vaccine. Jason Jones. Hey, Glenn. Just uh, defensively, two things: just communication and physicality. One, how do you guys get back to the communication that you guys seem to have a couple a few weeks ago? And just when it comes to physicality. Is that just an internal you know, guy? And each guy has to say, you know what, I'm going to physically accept the challenge when a guy like a Zion's coming in the paint. You know, I may get hit. You know, it may hurt, but I got to do this if we're all going to eventually get better. Yeah, I think it's both. Um, we've seen Fox take that charge. I think everybody's seen that charge on Zion that he took the other the other night, you know, and that's a big physical play. You know, that's that's a guy, our point guard, um, you know, sometimes one of the smallest players on the court that's willing to take that hit, willing to take up and um, make probably the biggest defensive play for us that night. Um, and that's that's big for us. That's big as our leader for us to see so that um, if he's doing it, there's no excuse for everyone else not to do it. Um, and I think, 
you know, the, one of the biggest things for, for me and for everybody on the team is we got to continue to have fun with this. You know, um, I heard Ty talking a little bit about it before I stepped in the media, but, um, you know, he's Ty is, is a big player on having fun. You know, he'll pass the ball if we want to run hard and we're, we're open. Um, I think we do a good job of sharing the ball and, and getting assists when we do have those opportunities. And end of the day, you know, we all um, are friends. We all real cool in that locker room. And, you know, I told the guys the other day, you don't often get a chance uh, to play on a team like this where everybody's cool, where everyone um, wants to see each other succeed. You know, and we have to get uh, back to having a little bit of fun like we did the first, you know, um, six games, uh, four to six games. And I think that, you know, once we get back to that basketball and having fun and keeping it uh, genuine and doing our jobs, you know, I think it can make a little bit uh, things a little bit easier for us. You know, um, everybody's reading, everybody's hearing, uh, you know, the, the media talk about our defense and things that we're doing wrong. But we got to remember that, um, you know, we are basketball players. We got to come in with a, with, a, with a chip on our shoulder. We got to come in and have fun as well. And I think that that can help turn some things around. And that's honestly how we were playing at the beginning of the season, playing for each other, playing fun, playing for the city. Are there any other questions for Glenn before we get out? Matt George. Hey, Glenn, speaking of having fun, Marvin Bagley over his last seven games, he's looked a lot more comfortable, seems to be enjoying himself, scoring is up, shooting uh, almost 50 or 60% from the field, over 40% from three-point range. Just from your perspective, what have you seen out of him over these last seven compared to the first seven? Does it look like the hard work that he's been putting in is, is finally paying off? Yeah, yeah. Um, Marv comes to work every day, you know, and that's just a reflection of hard work, you know, and 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 we talked I talked a little bit about the basketball guys when you play uh, bad or when you don't have energy, you know, things don't seem to go your way. Um, but a guy like him, he's competing every night. He comes in, uh, he puts his head down and, and, and he's on the grind every single day, whether it's practice or games. And one thing that I don't really see change out of Marv is you know, his his confidence and his ability to to play the game and score the basketball. And, and you guys are seeing that and I'm happy for his success. And we want him. He's a he's a hell of a player. We want him to continue to play at that level and playing with all the confidence that he has uh, because we do need him. So I'm happy for Mark. Hey, last question, Jason Anderson. Hey, Glenn, I just uh, wanted to ask you about the coaching staff. Um, what is the tone the demeanor, the the messaging that that you're getting from Luke and, and his staff right now? Yeah, I think from the players, um, even even the guys in the training staff, um, to Luke and, and his coaching staff, everybody's kind of turned it up a notch. Um, we see where we were at at the beginning of the season. We see where we're at now and how we're playing. And we're all trying to remain positive, but we're all know, we all know that level that we can play at. We all know that ability that we have. Um, so I think everybody's kind of stepping it up and, and just holding each other accountable. And everybody wants to turn it up um, another notch for themselves and to help the team. So... I'm excited to see where we keep going uh, from this, you know, take this road game and, and go into it and have some fun and play hard. Um, at the same time, like I said, everybody's just taking it up a notch and we know that level that we, that basketball that we want to play.